Indoor football, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. The tournaments. Splendid. You have meetings in it. The hairdressers, the cafe, where the ball ends on. The ball moves out. People have been saying, oh, it's shut down, it's shut down, it's shut down. It's been shutting down for the last 10 years. And we've got quite a few lots oh, of the country we and have, western uh, the mm -hmm. people in this area. Mm -hmm. They have the big ball. Mm -hmm. I don't want this word. The decent ones do want to see coming down on the road. To do it. Yeah. And it's just it's a hard on hand the bike on one bike. Spoiler for everybody. I think the council should like say to us, like, what do you want? Like Martin, it's boring on a night, and then like when you get bored, you just go out causing trouble, like on the streets and stuff. There should be more activities for us oh, to do because if if you're in trouble, you could just come here and it could help you. So we we are at that really good level, pegging with them now, where they can just we did a massive session around respect, like right near the beginning, sort of laid out the ground rules. They made their own ground rules. We can see young people that are lost and have nowhere to go. Um, they're not sure where to find the help and support. Um, and there's a big gap in services, um, leading to not just antisocial behaviour, but non-engagement in mental health. It will be non-engagement in schools. The exclusion rates in schools are going sky high, so we'll see the exclusion rates on the rise, along with antisocial behaviour on the rise. The young people have a voice, and if they've got a voice and they're listened to, and services are tailored to the needs of that group, then we've found a bit of a solution. We might find the key that makes that, that switch. Um, for me, finding that key, the young people being brought along on that process is, is the definite way forward. Um, don't plan services for young people without including them in the process. If you don't include them in the process, how are you going to bring them along on a journey? Mm. And if that journey is going to be successful, they need to be part of it from the beginning. And that's not lip service. We talk about young people's consultation and let's ask them what to do. And let's fill a box in and let's tick a, tick a list. In terms of youth voice from an authority point of view, I really don't think it's listened to enough. Um, I think that um, they're asked to do a lot. Um, they're asked to have their opinions on what they want somewhere to look like, how they want their centres to look, be, um, what youth provision should look like, but it never seems to really follow through, um, unfortunately, which is a real shame because they are the future of um, this East Middlesbrough area um, and they should be the ones who should have a say on what they want things to look like. Um, listen to them they are they do speak a lot of sense they know what they're on about they just need that time to be listened to um, and i think you'd gain a lot from them if you did and um, we started this provision which is positively pally which you can see the bus in the background um, and we started this seven weeks ago and we've had 170 young people come and engage with us in the mm. space of seven weeks which really shows how much youth provision is needed in this area mm. if we could run more than one evening we totally would we love doing this job and we love working with the kids we've come across so far the pitches are actually good quality so like the defense is quite tall so they can't, anyone can just over. And people want to use like proper goals instead of using like cones or like like oh, just take a, take any jumpers off. Maybe you could lock it through the night though from like say nine or something. Like it could be nine or later, but don't have it past like midnight and then shut it until the morning. So what about when it's still getting vandalised by the kids or when it's open? Well, it's all lock it, but mm. no, I'm getting. But then pictures aren't being vandalised. 
Um, so uh, like we have a, like a gate going around our, our school, and but at the back like there's a big there's a big long gate like a big long green gate, mm. and then beyond it is Southland Centre like yeah. Southland's pitches. Mm -hmm. So we thought like why don't you extend the pitches and to go like join to our field? But you have club up there because kids only get into trouble around these areas. Everything, everything that we used to have, either it's all, it's all got knocked down, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and, and, and now there's nothing for like kids to do. Okay. It's no wonder well, kids are begging. The old kids are going to do it like our rage, but uh -huh. still, when they're only like yeah, seven and eight, they are going to use a youth club because what are they like? They're watching us do all that, so they're only going to do it. They're going to think it's right. They're taking everything away from like the older ones and giving everything to the little ones. Exactly. So the only option we've got is. Right. Like, then. no wonder the estates is like this. We live in poverty and no wonder. School for teenagers leaving like needles and stuff. How's that fair? Yeah. Like, no, it's not fair though at all. Like, everyone's burning down the bins in there. We could just set up our own, so if we set up our own, then it can show that we can actually handle stuff, like, situations properly. I think the council are just thinking about themselves, to be honest. I don't so know why. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think they're just thinking about money, like, not everything's about money, like, so I think we follow the developments quite closely. We're obviously very close to Southlands. We're at the school next door. Mm -hmm. um, we have a partial stake in the pitches, mm -hmm. um, which is split between the council, the pitches, and um, and North Ormsby Football Club. The youth club, uh, I'd like to see the sports facilities, football associated activities, which would require quite a large hall. Uh, I'd like to see a space that the dancers could come back to because they kept the place viable. They, they actually used it 30 weekends a year and every half term for the medals and they're looking for a place to come back to. They keep inquiring, can they come back? I'd like to see a nice cafe in there. I'd like to see facilities for non-vocational education, uh, languages, philosophy, that type of stuff. People coming in and just going in to have classes. Uh, the, a large enough space for badminton, that type of thing, so you need a a little bit of height and enough space to mark the pictures out. Mm -hmm. Just generally, more or less what was going on in the other place, but a more fit for purpose building, if you like. But I would really like to see what they're prepared to put up on that site. And if they're putting something up that's not big enough, I don't think it'll be viable. I quite like the idea of a community asset transfer, uh, exactly who should run it should be not-for-profit, well, however it's run. And I think that the communities themselves should have a big say in how it's run. It should be an organisation not-for-profit and they're quite happy to cross-subsidise the profitable parts to pay for non-profitable and even free activities for people. I would like to see it being something for the community and not just a small, what, what I perceive to be really relatively a glorified changing room <laughs> as it looks on the, on the plans. We certainly need a far, far bigger building than what they're actually showing us. And also, from my point of view, because I live so close to the centre, we need to be given some some more information about what's going to happen with the rest of the site. I would hate to think that somebody private took it over. It became too expensive for anybody to use anyway because <coughs> that would be a complete and utter waste of time. Mm. Um, and I would like to see, as Jim said, a lot more facilities than what I can see could happen in what we've been shown up to now.